go. One, two, three, four. Waters Lutheran Church on this All Saints Sunday. A couple of announcements before we begin our worship together this morning. Um, jazz night is December 10th. There will be a meeting for all those going on the mission trip uh, at noon today. And those tickets are going to be passed out. So those tickets will be on sale starting uh, next Sunday or even this week. So uh, if you're coming to jazz night, that would be get ready to buy those tickets because they'll go quickly. Uh, one session uh, on December 10th, and this, the proceeds go to help our youth do their mission trip, which this year will be in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Yes, yes. <clears throat> Maybe part of our ministry will be consoling Packer fans who will be you know, distraught from the season. Anyway, 
Uh, a reminder, the annual meeting is January 29th, and then the date that I know you all put on your calendar last week, but just in case, February 26th, after worship, we will have our Visioning Summit. Please put it on your calendar. I want that date. I want you here. I want all of our voices to be part of that visioning. Thank you. Uh, let's see. A reminder, the Linda Sweeney meal train is still up and available. We've had dates filled in, but I think we still have a couple available coming up. If you're interested in helping with that, please do. Uh, we have a prayer team here at Living Waters. I put this out on Realm, but just in case, I know some people have said they've had some trouble with Realm emails, which if you are, please talk to me. Let's figure that out. Or check the spam folder. That's almost always the culprit. But uh, we have a prayer team. Uh, pray for the, all the prayer concerns that get sent to us. Uh, if you want to be part of that prayer team, let us let me know. We'll add you to the email. Uh, next week, we will be recognizing all veterans as part of Veterans Day weekend. So uh, last year, I announced that, and then all our veterans were mysteriously, or not all, but a lot of them mysteriously were in church in person the next Sunday. So please don't run away. We want to recognize you. So uh, that's next Sunday. We're going to be an election site this coming Tuesday for the general election. Uh, so they ask, let's try to minimize church business on that day in person here. Um, but just a heads up, if you do happen to come by on Tuesday, it's like, wow, there's a lot of people here. They're voting, um, and it's supposed to be a secure location, so uh, let's leave them to do that. Thank you. And please go vote. We as Lutherans encourage participation in the, the earthly kingdom as well as the heavenly one. If there are other announcements this morning, you want to start making your way up front... Yeah, Chris, come on. <laughs> All right. Um, I got a question that I thought would be a good announcement, too. Hey, if there's all these posts the church puts out on Facebook, on Instagram, Realm. Are we allowed to share those? Yes, please do. Please share those. Like it, love it, comment, share it. We love it all. It helps get boost its appearance in feeds. Uh, you know, those, the pages, the what's happening in, in Algonquin, Crystal Lake, Lake in the Hills. Employees of the business, if we post on those, they're considered spam. But if people who don't work for the church post them, that's okay. That's you. So, just a heads up, just, just throw that out there. Like, next time we have an awesome event, just throw that on there. Chris, do you have an announcement? Oh, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, my name's Chris Zybert. And I am the chairperson of the RIC Task Force, which is the Reconciling in Christ a group of people that have been working on uh, leading us to a designation of a, actually a safe place for all kinds of people to worship. Um, we are having a meeting to tell you more about this two weeks from today on Sunday the 20th, right after service at 11.15, we'll tell you um, what the program is, um, why it's important that uh, we do this, tell you what we've done so far, um, and tell you how you can help in the process. So please give us, it shouldn't take that long, give us a little bit of your time next Sunday so we can all know what we're doing. Two, two Thanks. Sundays. I'm sorry? Two Sundays from now. Did I say next? Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. On the 20th, which is 14 days, so two Sundays. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, you're welcome. Lord knows I've messed up many announcements in my time. So, yes, uh, and there's more information on the board as well. We will have, there's question forms that can be filled out uh, with your name for follow-up or anonymously. They can be submitted to the mailbox there. There'll also be a Google form that'll be available soon. Um... Any other announcements this morning before my final two? Okay, today is All Saints Sunday. Uh, this is a day we remember all the, the, those who have passed that are now uh, with God eternally, and, and we remember them before God. And, and so there were folks that sent in names. So what we'll do uh, after the sermon song today in, in, in worship, uh, we'll have a time where you're invited to come up and light candles around the font. Now, this is really important is really important. Please, here's some of the first. A, do you have to light a candle? No. The prayers still count. It's okay. Okay. The promises of, true are, of God are true no matter what. Okay. There's the caveat. But if you're one of the first people, 
please light the ones that are closer in to the font, okay? Because if we light the ones on the outside, then people are gonna have to go over open flame to light the ones that are closer. And I know Lutherans, you hate being near the front, I understand, <laughs> but for safety, Light, the, kind of work our way outward, if that makes sense, all right? And it's a new lighter, look at that, okay? So no struggle uh, lighting those this year. Uh, but yes, so during that, we'll have time. Uh, you'll be invited to come light candles. Olivia will be playing some lovely soft music underneath. I'll be reading the names aloud in prayer that were sent to me this week, and then we'll have a closing prayer as our time of remembrance. Um, okay, finally... Our stewardship series continues. Our faith, our future, our time. So, uh, Rachel Hughes is our speaker this morning. Thank you, Rachel. Good morning. Yes, I am Rachel Hughes. For those of you who don't know me, I am the chair for fellowship. Um, so, I am um, just here to share about fellowship. I would say that um, I've been grooming for fellowship since I was in grade school, um, going to parent-teacher conferences. The teachers always told my parents that I was very talkative, so what can I say? <laughs> um, I really like to get to know people, talk to people. I'm a people person. Um, I like to gather. I like to plan things. Um, I'm also a procrastinator, um, so I could use somebody who, you know, likes to plan ahead of time. I'm kind of a, oh, let's do this in two weeks kind of a person. So um, I could use somebody who, you know, is like thinking ahead. Um, so uh, fellowship to me, though, is just about getting together with people, um, getting to know people, having fun. I like planning activities, but hey, maybe my fun's not your fun. So <laughs> it would be great to have some new, fresh ideas. I am open to anything. Um, some of the upcoming things that we have going on um, in December, we are going to have, we are going to live stream the Bears Packers game here have a very friendly um, viewing of the game and there's going to be some fun activities and games for kids um, and stuff like that. There may or may not be some swinging at pinatas when, you know, the other people's team scores or something like that. Um, so, or maybe you just have some frustration on your own team that you want to hit the pinata. <laughs> uh, whatever. But, um, so yeah, so that's coming up, so more info to come on that. Um, and then also we are looking to do in December a, a cookie exchange, so more info to come um, on that. Um, one thing I do like um, to put out there is that if when we do events, if there's like signups, it's really helpful if people sign up um, ahead of time because it kind of gives us an idea of how many people or should we or shouldn't we hold the event? Um, we're all busy, we all have things going on. Um, so if, if it's like nobody can come, especially if for me, not as much of a big deal for me, but if I'm bringing someone else in to help us out with an event, I don't wanna waste their time. Um, so I just like to put that out there that if you can sign up ahead of time, that is very helpful. Um, or if you sign up and something comes up and you can't come, just let me know. That um, is really helpful as well. But we are definitely looking for more people to join fellowship um, and come up with new fresh ideas, plan events. Um, like I said, maybe my fun's not your fun, so maybe you have other ideas um, that other people would enjoy that I'm not thinking of. Um, so I would love to have more people join. So I will just end with our next fellowship meeting it is on Thursday, November 17th at 7 p.m. here at the church. And then we also uh, do a Zoom as well. So if you can't make it here but you want to be on and share your ideas and thoughts, you can Zoom in. So that's it. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Rachel, and I, I think the Packer Bear tailgate will test the bounds of fellowship in a good way, in a good way. I'm not feeling very fellowship-like towards my team right now, so maybe it'll be, we'll, we'll come together in consolation, we'll see. All right, uh, any final announcements this morning?
All right, with that, please stand as you're able as we begin worship together with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who redeems us in Christ Jesus, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let's confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have ignored voices that call for your justice. We have neglected the acts of your righteousness. We have spoken and acted in ways that disrupt your beloved community. We truly repent the things we have done. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Restore our troubled spirits. Rejoice and be glad. God hears the prayers of all who cry out and restores to us life through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I declare to you the forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. One, two, three. Thank you. 
let us pray. O God, our eternal Redeemer, by the presence of your Spirit, you renew and direct our hearts. Keep always in our mind the end of all things and the day of judgment. Inspire us for a holy life here, and bring us to the joy of the resurrection through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading today is from Psalm 149. You can find this reading on page 508 in the Bible under your chair. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in its maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing, making melody to him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with victory. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats and two-edged swords in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings with fetters and their nobles with chains of iron, to execute on them the judgment decreed. This is glory for all his faithful ones. Praise the Lord. Oh, sorry. Um, the next reading is um, Ephesians 1, 11 through 23. You can find this reading on page 949 in the Bible under your chair. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes, accomplishes all things according to to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him so that, with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe. According to the working of his great power, God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Word of God, word of life. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. 
The Gospel of our Lord according to Luke, the sixth chapter. You can find this reading on page 838 in your Bible in front of your chair, if you'd like to follow along. Luke 6, 20 through 31. And he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you, will have, you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you and all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you, that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. And I invite the kids up for the children's sermon this morning. Good morning. Good morning. How y'all doing? Good. Good. Okay. So if I want to know how to get somewhere, what's the best way to do that these days? Yeah. Uh huh. So GPS or Google Maps, right? That's what I have this morning. Is that your answer too? Yeah, right. What would you use an atlas or something? That's crazy. Anyway, all right, all right. So, uh, so okay. I got my Google Maps out. Okay, got. Yeah. So here we are. That's us. Okay. Okay. So if I want to go, I don't know. Uh, let's go to New York City. New York. So yeah, that sounds fun. Okay, hold on. Boom. Uh, let's not walk there. That'd be a little far. <laughs> let's not walk. All right, it's loading. Okay, it would take us 12 hours and 54 minutes. Yeah, I mean, if we left now, maybe we get there by like midnight. I don't know. That doesn't include traffic. Oh, my goodness. All right, hold on. Let's try. All right, fine. We'll do Chicago. That's a little closer. Okay, here, just, just for you, Easton. It's an hour and 12 to drive. Let's walking to Chicago would take 15 hours and 37 minutes. No, a lot longer. A lot longer. All right, so let's see. Uh, if I want to know... Uh, how to live my life. Here, let's see what happens if I punch that in. How to live my life. How, my, how What do I have to do? Where do I have to go? What do I have to... Did you mean New York City? <laughs> no. Error. Error? Okay, now hold on. You told me if I wanted to know how to do anything, go anywhere, the GPS would help me. And yet, I got nothing here. Oh, there's a difference. Oh my goodness, so how am I supposed to live my life then? How do I know that? So the Bible is like our GPS for life. Very good, Shiloh. I'll give you the five bucks later. <laughs> anyway, yeah, the, 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 uh, the Bible is, is, is our GPS of showing us how to live. And specifically, there's this teaching this morning to do to others as you would have them do to you. Right? Have you ever heard of that one before, the golden rule? Right? That's a pretty good guiding principle. No matter where you are, whether it's you're walking to New York City, or driving, or wherever, right? Uh, this, this rule helps us in how to live, how to, how to, no matter where we're going, how to live our life. That's pretty cool. Walk with God, yeah, we'll go with it. All right, let us pray this morning. Let us, uh, yeah, uh, let us pray this morning. I invite you to be after me, I invite the congregation to join in as well. Dear God, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. And for your word, 
and showing us how to live. Please help us to ask for directions from you. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up this morning. Have a wonderful week. Righteous, a person or conduct that is morally right or justifiable. Virtuous. Or the second definition from our friend Merriam-Webster, very good or excellent. Today is All Saints Sunday, and often, whether it's in the liturgy, it's already happened once, in the writings, in the prayers, and simply how we speak of the saints, the idea of righteousness always bubbles up to the surface. The saints are today remembered as righteous, but why? It's interesting, interesting to me. Okay, I love this time of year. And just last week, we Lutherans made this big to-do on Reformation Sunday about justification by grace through faith. Right? Last week, I preached... Repeatedly, that baptism is a gift from God that we can never earn. God is a deity of grace who loves us despite all our mistakes. Well, let's use that word today. God loves us despite our lack of being righteous. So why a week later are we talking about the saints and righteousness? Morally right, virtuous, very good, excellent, justifiable. Those all sound like words that focus on our actions, or even worse, our worth. That's contrary to what we heard last week, is it not? Even this week's Gospel from Luke, the Sermon on the Plain, it's dripping with righteousness, with a blessing to those who follow God's way and woe to those who do not. We leaned so heavy in the gospel last week, we had to go back to the law more this week. To dissect this moment, let me take a step back. I'll tell you a story from one of my seminary professors, still a living saint for me. Uh, but let me tell you, one of his most endearing attributes is that he was not always righteous. I like to think we're birds of a feather in that way, but anyway. Also, you can blame him for me loving biblical Greek. So, you know, there you go. Uh, my dear professor was scouting out a tour of the Holy Land for an eventual study abroad class in Israel. And you've got to understand, to see some of these sites, the holy sites, uh, you have to go out into uh, some more rural roads. I've never been, bucket list. Uh, but I've heard that a lot of them can be a little windy, uh, maybe not the best maintained. And at one point, he was heading back to Jerusalem, and he hits a particularly bumpy road. Then he hit one of those deep, deep potholes. And we know this feeling in the Midwest too, where you, when you hit it you, in horror, you actually feel your soul leave your body for a moment. <clears throat> My professor, again, not always being the definition, dictionary definition of righteousness, admitted he may have yelled out a profanity or 10. As he realized, the rental car had now constantly started pulling to the right. And it made a new creaking noise when turning. To make a long story short, full of rental car red tape that would bore you to tears, he ended up having to be the one to take it to the repair shop. And after waiting for what felt like forever, the repair man came out and told him that he had found the issue and it had been fixed and he was good to go. The car is now Sadek. Sadek. It's a Hebrew word. T Z A D E K. Everyone say it with me now. Sadek. Very good. Uh, not Greek, Hebrew in the sermon. Oh, yeah, here we go. All right. So at this point, my ancient Greek professor who knew enough Hebrew to be dangerous, okay, uh, he was very confused. And he asked for clarification. Sir, you mean to say this car is now righteous? The repairman apparently had a really good laugh at this one. And in between laughter said, yeah, totally righteous, bro. 
Because while Sadek does mean, in fact, righteousness in Hebrew, he was simply trying to tell my professor that the car was now properly aligned. Aligned. It was out of alignment. But in this uh, comical lost in translation moment, I think there's some wisdom to be gained for us this morning on All Saints Sunday. For in the Hebrew language, what our Old Testament is written in, by the way, a language Jesus spoke, there is an inherent understanding between righteousness and alignment. So applying this to All Saints today, what if we've been thinking about righteousness from the wrong perspective? Instead of thinking about, as Merriam-Webster does, this idea of doing right or wrong, of being morally right and virtuous and excellent enough, let's bring it back to the language of our baptism to our relationship with God? What if being a righteous saint of God is not about us, but instead about with what we are aligned? Aha! Again, in baptism, God aligns us with God's self. Being a saint isn't about our worth. God has already made us worthy of love. We heard this last week. And our sainthood is not about our actions or inactions. Because righteousness to God is not a test of holiness. Again, we are made righteous by God as a gift, freely given of grace. Today I want to submit to you that being a saint is indeed about righteousness, but it's not ours. It's about our God being righteous. It's about our God who wants to be aligned with us together. God chose this meaning of righteousness because God cares more about having an eternal relationship with us than always being right. I mean, God always is. Maybe better put, Zadek is the answer to all that old question about wanting to be happy. Is it better to be correct or do you want to be right? I mean, God is both. But with us, God chooses primarily to be right, to be aligned with us. That is in relationship to us. So the saints that we will remember today, we celebrate today, we lift up, we're not putting them on a pedestal. They weren't perfect. And we don't remember them as such. Rather, we remember them because of our relationship with them. And the precious memories that we had with them in love. We remember how our lives were aligned with theirs. There's power in relationships. So often when we speak of where we saw God in our lives, it's through people. Through our relationships with others. In the aligning of our lives, God is abundantly present. We celebrate that today. This is why God freed us by grace. So that when we do lose our way, or perhaps our, our lives pull too far one way or the other, the relationships in our lives bring us back. We, like all the other saints, are not perfect, but we are aligned with God and with one another. We may not be Actually, spoiler, you won't be, we won't be, always perfectly virtuous, always perfectly morally right or excellent, but as saints living in the grace of God's righteousness, we are always loved. The communion of saints that we confess in the creed each week, it is a gift that keeps on giving. It is through our relationships with others that we are blessed. Hear this gospel teaching again this morning from Luke. Blessed are the, the hungry now, for they will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. The saints, they are the one feeding. Those who console you now, they are aligned with you. And so doing, they are aligned with God. For woe to those who are full now, who do not fill others, or have joy and do not console, for they are not aligned with their neighbor. And these actions have caused them to be cut off from the relationships in their lives, to be cut off from God. 
That is why right after these blessings and woes from Jesus, he gets right into teaching about the relationships with others and living that way. We're meant to be aligned together with God and each other. The saints exist in relationship with each other, in baptism, in communion, and in life now and ever after. And so doing, we aspire in those relationships to do as Jesus teaches this morning, to love your enemies, to do good to those who hate you, Bless those who curse you. To give to everyone who begs from you. If anyone takes away your goods, do not ask them again. Do unto others as you would have them do to you. An ultimate teaching of reliving in healthy relationships and living in balanced alignment. This teaching isn't a measuring stick. It isn't a measuring stick to weed out who's righteous and who's not. No, it's showing us how to live with one another by how to share the grace of Christ. So many of these are choosing to be right and aligned instead of choosing to be correct. To value relationships over our own justification. They're examples to choose what God did of seeking that sodic, that alignment of one another instead of being more morally right than others. And that choice, my friends, that choice is grace. Choosing loving relationships over moral superiority, that is sharing the grace of Christ. So today, we remember the saints. We celebrate a God who chose to be aligned with us and everyone forever. It is by God's righteousness that we are made holy. We live in alignment with God and one another, lovingly supporting one another, encouraging and caring for one another. On this All Saints Sunday, when we remember our loved ones, hear Christ's victory over death perhaps means more to us than it does on Easter morning. Here we give thanks to God who chose these eternal relationships with us. As we remember all the ways where we saw God alive in the presence of the saints. And in so doing, we are tremendously blessed. Amen.
this time, I invite us to be in a time of prayer and remembrance for the saints. You are invited now to come up and uh, light candles if you wish. We have two lighters. We can have people going on either side. Otherwise, please be in prayer with thanksgiving and, and remembrance.
Agnes. Don. Stephen. Let us pray. Holy God, on this All Saints Sunday, we come before you remembering all who have passed from this earthly pilgrimage into your eternal care. Today we remember their lives, their faithful witness that impacted our journey of faith, giving thanks through Jesus Christ for the promises of their baptism are now complete. Together we have lit these candles as a sign of hope in times of sorrow. For you, O God, are the guiding beacon of grace in our weary world. To you, our Savior, we lift up your saints that we have prayed for aloud or in the silence of our hearts this day. Thank you for giving us them to love in this life, for securing for them life eternal with you. We cling to your promise of resurrection and look forward to the eternal banquet where we will be united with them once more forever. Amen. Please stand as you are able. <clears throat> Enjoy me confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, our Father, our Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. United with all your saints across time and place, together we pray for our shared world. God of time and space, our faith has been passed down through the generations. Bless new believers, catechumens, and any affirming their faith in you, that they share what they have first received. Lord, in your mercy. God of tempest and tide, our world is full of dazzling beauty and brutal destruction. Protect us and all your creatures from hurricanes, floods, earthquakes, and fires. Restore what has been lost. Lord, in your mercy. God of truth, we raise up leaders with integrity, honesty, and compassion. Unite our elected officials in shared goals that benefit and serve all people. Instill in them hearts of justice, mercy, and peace. Lord, in your mercy. God of tumult, you sustain and guide your people when the way forward is uncertain. Abide with all going through transitions at work, school, or in their personal lives. Bring healing to those who are sick. Today we lift up prayers, especially out loud, at home in the comment section, or in the silence of our hearts. Reassure us of your constancy in the midst of change, Lord, in your mercy. God of togetherness, deepen the relationships that are built in this place. Form us as a community where tears of sorrow and shouts of joy can both be shared, Lord, in your mercy. God of tenderness, we give thanks for all who have died in the faith. Console our mourning spirits with the promise of eternal life in your presence. Lord, in your mercy. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those only known to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of that peace.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Almighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering there, for his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Christ spreads a table before you. Gather here with all the saints. All are welcome.
you stand as you are able. And let us pray. Blessed are you, maker of all things. You have entrusted us with all that you have created. Now gather our gifts, nourish us with the sacraments, and send us to those who hunger and thirst. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The God of peace who creates all things and calls them good, who makes us alive in Jesus, who breathes on us the spirit of hope, bless you now and forever. Amen. There's a river of living water in my soul, in my soul. Go in peace, be a blessing in the world.